thank you very much for joining us. And uh, we are so thrilled to have you back. Uh, we spoke about patterns regarding the self. Let's mm -hmm. speak about patterns that relate to ourselves and how it affects our relationships. So there are different kinds of uh, beliefs that you can have about yourself, which get in the way of having more, uh, you know, more satisfactory relationships or satisfying relationships. Mm -hmm. um, one of the beliefs uh, that, are, that sometimes people have which get in the way is uh, this belief about being abandoned or rejected. So some people grew up feeling that whoever they love will leave them. And um, when you enter into a relationship with that kind of a belief, it does affect the relationship a lot because then, you know, sometimes people will cope with that belief by really becoming very clingy and needy and holding on to people. Uh, where could that come from though? The clinginess and holding no, on? Where, where, where could this belief that I will be abandoned come from? So this belief is usually formed, uh, it's, it's, you know, all of these beliefs are usually formed in childhood. And it's childhood experiences. It could be something like, um, you know, uh, actually going away to boarding school at a very young age, or it could be losing a parent at a very young age or a parent not being available for whatever reasons to the child, but what the child experiences it as, I mean, the, child, the parent may physically still be around somewhere uh, or even in the house, but for whatever reason is not emotionally available to the child, not emotionally engaged with the child. And the child experiences that as an abandonment, as that they've been left on their own. The child is not able to see things from a grown-up's point of view. They, they can only see things from their point of view and they don't even have the thinking ability that a grown-up has to look at a, a situation and say, okay, you know, yes, parents have to travel to work because they're working, you know, these are work demands, whatever it is, you know, and, and then, uh, but, but they still love you and care for you kind of a thing. The child is coming just from an experience and mm -hmm. forming, uh, you know, their understanding based on that experience. And, but it is that child's understanding, the child's belief then which carries on uh, within us as grown-ups. You were talking about going away to boarding school and uh, this is where you know we've spoken about it at length. I had problems uh, really having deep relationships mm -hmm. you know, or attachments with people, right. right? I didn't know for the longest time what the belief was. Uh, so I think one also can go the mm -hmm. other extreme and not want to form yeah. or not know how to form deep relationships yeah. or attachments. It's not a very conscious thing. It's a mm -hmm. subconscious belief mm -hmm. that one has, right? Yeah. Some of the behaviors that come can come out of it is like you said, that you, know, you kind of stay away from close relation. It's not that you'll never have a friend or you won't be friendly with people or you won't get along or yes. anything like that. But it's just that when, you know, when it comes to a point where it's about having close relationships, that's when, you know, these thoughts get activated. And if, if one has carried that fear along mm. of will they, will people be there for me when I need them, right? That's what, you know, abandonment, rejection really was. And, uh, if one has come up with a fear that, you know, they won't be there, then why do you want to put yourself in that position, right? Where people won't be there for you when you need them. So yes. so then it's it's kind of a protective, it's kind of a defense <clears throat> that you develop of avoiding. Either you say, okay, fine, I just don't want to get into it. Or you kind of move away when things start becoming, you know, you, you get closer to a person. So there are different ways to cope. So the, the clingy and needy was one way, right? Because... You're kind of playing into that belief um, and you're clinging on. The other is this, uh, that you avoid. And then you can also, on the other hand, become very demanding and very over-controlling of the other person. But it's all, it's all coming out of fear. So that's the other thing, right? I mean, if, if somebody is very clingy and needy, I mean, after a point, it will cause trouble in the relationship. And it is possible then that the relationship will break up. Or if you, if you never really... Uh, get close to anybody, then you will never experience, uh, you know, emotional closeness or, you know, emotional needs being met. So in that sense, you know, you'll always stay away from it and keep mm. fearing that it'll happen. And in relationships, it also gets a little more complex because it's not just your own patterns, but the other person's patterns. I mean, exactly. all of us have certain belief patterns, right? We, we have certain fundamental beliefs, things that we believe about ourselves, about other people, about 
relationships about the world. And, uh, you know, it's, so in any kind of interaction, any, especially any kind of a close relationship, even in, in offices and everything, I mean, we're all, you know, acting based on what we think deep down inside, right? And that causes trouble mm. as well. But, but the beauty of it is that, you know, sometimes uh, being in a relationship can also help you move out or break that, uh, you know, belief, you know, mm. break that pattern and, you know, get out of that belief and replace it with a more positive belief. That's the crux of every discussion that we are going to have from now. The moment there is some sort of a conflict in a relationship, the first thing to do is actually take a look at your own belief and then think mm. about what belief patterns your partner may have. Mm. It may not be so-and-so's fault or your fault, yeah. right? It could yeah. simply be your interpretation of what you yeah. have yeah. Uh, felt or experienced yeah. in the past. And the same may happen uh, to the other person, right? How do you break that pattern? It's, it's one of those things where, you know, you have to first become aware of it. Mm. So if you find that, you know, in a relationship, you're feeling stuck or you feel that, you know, you're arguing about the same things again and again, or you're having fights again and again, uh, or certain emotions keep coming up again and again, uh, you have to kind of take those strong emotions as clues and say, okay, what's happening? And, and like you said, I mean, a lot of the times when you look at, okay, why, am, why was I feeling so angry? A lot of the focus becomes, you know, because so-and-so didn't do this or they did this or they, whatever. So the focus is on the other person or the situation. Uh, but that doesn't provide you the answer to what you need to work on. So you, you have to actually reflect back and say, uh, but what did I feel then? You know, when I was feeling so angry or when I was feeling so sad, uh, what did I feel? And the thing about emotions also is that sometimes it's a bunch of emotions that one is feeling. It's different emotions. So, you, so it's also about sifting through them and saying, okay, I was feeling so, so angry, but angry may just kind of be a defensive reaction. What is underneath that? Maybe underneath that was more of a feeling of sadness, perhaps. And once you tap into that feeling of sadness, then you can figure out, okay, you know, which is the more troublesome emotion, and, and then what are the thoughts that went along with that emotion? So, so the initial reaction to a fight could be, oh, you, know, you don't care, or you don't do things for me, and, you know, and oftentimes in, in these kinds of interactions, it becomes you never do anything for me, or you always do X. So obviously those are exaggerations, yeah. but we all do that. But then the point is then to step back and say, okay, but is it really so? You know, and it's really not about the other person. It's really about what's going on inside my head. Sometimes it may bring you to the conclusion that it is about the other person. And then, of course, you have to take a different uh, And that's very stance. important. At Rebrain, we'd like to put across is that it's important to become aware whether they are your patterns or whether they are your partner's patterns. Uh, it's important to address them. Talk to us about multiple beliefs that play together and how that affects us. There are largely beliefs around your own self, right? And then, then there are beliefs around relationships. Yeah. And then there are be beliefs around the world, uh, what you expect from the larger world. The other beliefs that you could have about relationships that could get in the way is, you know, people can't be trusted. Or people are out only to, you know, take care of their own needs. Or, you know, a belief that, you know, no matter what my emotional needs will not get met in a relationship. One's own self also, you know, I'm, I'm worthless. Or if, if they really find out about me, they'll, you know, this person will leave me. Point is, you know, each of these beliefs, negative beliefs, um, make, make us feel bad and get in the way. When you have an overreaction to something, that's when you stop and you become more aware of why you've done it. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, often in relationships, you hear about this, uh, that one person has overreacted to a small situation. Mm -hmm. It's actually not the reaction to that uh, little mm -hmm. situation. It's mm -hmm. actually a larger thing. And I think it's important for both partners then to stop and assess. How much do we also replicate the relationship that our parents have had? You already have the baggage of a belief about relationships, mm -hmm. a belief about yourself, and then you bring in what you've seen in relationships around you, not just your parents, but perhaps you know relatives that mm -hmm. you have, friends that you have. The only relationship that you really see intimately is the re relationship at home, you know, between your parents and between your parents and you. That's what you have experience with. And, and that relationship between your parents really kind of forms a template for close relationships. Yes. 
it's um, what is familiar that we keep repeating. So if there are certain modes of communication that we are more familiar with, then we are likely to repeat that in our relationship. So if you know, one person doesn't communicate after a fight, then it's possible that we may also do the same yeah. when we have a fight in a close relationship. Or another person gets really angry and screams and shouts and throws things, then it's possible that we may repeat that. Um, on the other hand, the opposite extreme can also happen where you say, okay, fine, I'm, I'm never going to be like that, I'm not going to do that. And that can also be a problem in the relationship. The other way in which we replicate it is um, in terms of what our experience was when we were growing up in that family, in, in that particular environment, and what we felt, whether emotions are expressed or not, whether certain emotions are expressed or not. So in some families, you know, anger is not expressed at all. It's supposed to be really bad to get angry. Then if, every, if anybody gets angry, then it's a big deal, and you don't know how to deal with it. Mm. That's what the child would have felt then, and even now as a grown-up, it's possible that you know, somebody gets really angry, uh, then, then that really shakes you up. It's, it's not okay to feel sad or cry, and mm. you, know, you, won't, you won't want to show those emotions then. So that's what you've kind of learned. So some of it is what you've learned by watching. Some of it is what behaviors were encouraged or discouraged, what emotional expressions were encouraged or discouraged, and just the gen general larger template of what you saw happening that kind of gets created. In, in, in our cultural context, uh, if we talk about gender roles, you mm -hmm. often find, even till today, mm -hmm. that uh, there are certain emotions that are not to be expressed by certain genders, right? Mm -hmm. So men having emotions are looked down upon, and mm -hmm. uh, women not being emotional are looked upon as ex extremely aggressive. How much does that feed into the relationships that we have today? The cultural context in which you've grown in, um, and, and that has informed how one's parents would have behaved, what was, would have been considered okay, what would not have been considered okay. And the, and the thing is, that's what you also see in the neighbor's house, largely in the friend's house, that becomes the norm. And if you then try to step away from the norm in your own relationship, then, of course, there is resistance, possibly from outside, but there's also resistance from inside, because somewhere you feel that you're not um, performing the role that you're supposed to be performing. And I read somewhere, a child goes out into the world to work mm -hmm. and he, has to, he or she has to set up their own home. They end up establishing the kitchen as an exact replica to what they've seen or grown up with sure. without even realizing it. Perhaps the way conflicts were sorted, right? Mm -hmm. Or not. You learn how to resolve conflict by what, what you have seen, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if you have seen that people can talk and negotiate and come to a resolution and and after that we you know things are fine then 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 you figure out that okay that's one way of doing it you can try doing it yourself and you know that okay it's worked it can work right if you've never seen it happen how are you going to do it right if you if you've seen that you know conflicts happen they never resolved there's always this um, whether there's a cold war going on or there is just, you know, lots of overt, uh, you know, fights and stuff like that or whatever it is, in whichever, in whichever way it comes up, it's played out. Um, you don't know anything different. You've only seen what you've seen. Um, to be able to do something different, you have to consciously try to do something different, think something different, you know, and, and, and really do something different. Um, if, and uh, until that conscious thing happens, um, very unconsciously, you will just keep repeating what, what you've seen because mm. that's all you know. Yeah. Life skills such as these are not taught to us in school. And that's why uh, we set up ReBrain so that it's never too late to learn. It's never too late to uh, rewire yourself, rewire your thinking, change some of your wrongly held perceptions at whatever stage and age that you are in. You can do it, but you need to be consistent about it. It's just like going to the gym. Do not expect something to happen overnight. The, the reason why you know, we continue to uh, operate with the beliefs that we have is because it does make things very familiar for us. Right? It makes ourselves more familiar to us. It makes us familiar to other people. If, if I reacted to things in one fashion today and reacted in the opposite fashion tomorrow and in a third way day after tomorrow, 
then even I don't know what to expect from myself, right? So if I go into any situation, for, for everyone, you know, you, you want to know, okay, how you'll be in that particular context. You know very well, you know, a little up and down, but this is how largely mm. you're going to be and that is how the other people are also going to be. And that makes it predictable, that makes it safe, that makes it consistent. And this is why patterns last, because they make life more predictable, less chaotic and, and safer in that way. And that is why uh, it's also a lot harder to break them, because you also don't know what will happen if you, if you don't behave in a certain way. What is going to happen instead? How will other people react to it? That's will right. it work for you? Will it not work for you? You know, you know what's really going to happen? So, plus, it takes a lot of, uh, really, a lot of practice. It mm. is like learning a new skill, new language. But you decide to make a change. How other people react mm. is very interesting mm. because not everybody will be accepting of your change, mm -hmm. and that's when you need to decide whether you're waiting for external approval or you're willing to go at it because it's making you feel more authentic about mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the important thing about change is that when you do try to change, you know, it's, it's not a perfect process. It does happen that there are times when you'll be able to catch an emotion and, um, you know, look at the situation, look at what automa automatic, so th these are also called automatic thoughts, what automatic thoughts were triggered and, um, and, and replace them with different thoughts or, you know, relook at the situation, reassess. Um, you, you, can, you can do that at certain times, but certain times it may be difficult to do that. Also, when you are uh, going through a very stressful phase, uh, you know, the, the tendency for, for everyone is to kind of fall back on the old patterns of thinking. So you, can, you, you may find that there are times when you kind of go back to thinking like that, but that doesn't mean that it's now forever. You can catch yourself, you can bring yourself back to where you want to be and change those um, patterns. Doc, you work with couples. We talk about conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would be some common threads running through? Couples typically come with certain kinds of issues. If, if they are, uh, m you know, more recently married or whatever, newer in the relationship, then it's often about um, things like uh, who, who takes responsibility for what? I mean, who's, who's going to manage the kitchen? Who's going to cook? Who's going to manage the finances? Uh, people going to keep joint accounts, single accounts, things like that. So that is where then you have a lot of uh, those issues around, and also around family, uh, you know, how often do you visit? And how do you celebrate um, festivals? And if, if they're parents, then it's about parenting. What is the right way? to bring up a child, she'll scold them, not scold them, you know, so on and so forth. So, so there are different kinds of, I mean, so, so these are, well, one could say that these are all um, tasks that have to be performed mm. by two people together. And obviously, you know, there are problems when these tasks have to be performed. Now, uh, there is ne negotiation that goes on for all couples, right? You, you have to talk and discuss because you know, you don't come with a manual. Absolutely, saying, you know, it's, it's do this, amazing, do that. Right? right? So, and and what works for one couple can be very different from what works for another couple, right? But getting to that point where you figure out what works for the two of you uh, takes some time, and um, it takes some effort. Now, where things really uh, become a, a, a longer-standing problem. So, 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 I'm, so, so what I'm saying is that, of course, all couples have discussions, all couples have arguments, and they're healthy, there's no problem with it. Doesn't mean that because you're having an argument that the relationship is doomed. Um, but where it does become a problem is when there is repeated conflict. You're, you're probably fighting about the same things or similar things again and again and again over years. And what happens in that kind of a situation is also there's a lot of resentment that gets built up over the years. It is always a small thing, but, the, but actually the underlying theme that runs under this, which is kind of connected to uh, the self-beliefs, the beliefs that one holds about one's own self or relationships, is, you know, things like um, you don't love me or you don't love me enough, you're not committed to me, uh, if you do this, it means that you're not, if you haven't done this, then it means it, whatever it is, right? So, so basically, uh, there are questions around how committed are you to the relationship? 
uh, and how committed are you uh, uh, is a question that can be asked out of a fear that this relationship is not going to last. So it all boils down to you ultimately. It does. Right? It is it your does, belief yeah. playing over and over for again. And for both people. Yes. And it's both. like if I have a certain belief and I behave a certain way, what does it trigger in you mm. then, right? And 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 oftentimes it's those underlying. It's not the. It's not really resolving the problem. Those, those are again functional things that you have to kind of sort through. That's not. I mean that people can figure out, right? I mean who's going to take out the trash and who's going to cook? You can negotiate, but when people are not able to negotiate these things, it's because it's meaning something else for them. It's triggering something else for them. These are just regular, simple, mm. everyday things. The the argument might happen. But then how, does, how big does the argument become? Uh, or if you may feel upset, but how long does the upset last? Mm. It could be a few seconds, it could be a few minutes, few hours, few weeks, whatever. Obviously, if it's going into a few days or few, especially a few weeks, months or years, then, then there's something majorly wrong going on, which, I mean, you need to stop and look at. So um, it's like, you know, it's somebody said, uh, one of the psychologists said, you know, no matter who you marry, you will... Uh, inherit a certain set of problems <laughs> so it's you know going in saying that uh, I think the the basic things that need to be sorted out are around trust and commitment and if 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 you you know are, are willing to look at the other person as you know saying that okay they are committed and I do trust them and they will be uh, in this relationship for the long run and will survive then, you know, the, the small negotiations, I mean, there are always negotiations, right? Some you give, some the other person gives, some you kind of live with. What are some of the things that we can keep in mind to make and to have strong relationships? Self-love is really one of the you biggest know? things. So, so yeah, I mean, so, so everything flows from that. If, if, you can, if you can accept yourself, if you can be fine with who you are, if you think that you deserve love and affection and respect and all of those things, and not in a grandiose or entitled way, but in a very uh, healthy way, then you can set those boundaries, then you can express your needs when you feel them. You, you can ask for things without feeling like you're asking for too much or you, you're a burden on the other person or you know they will reject you or whatever without any of those fears. And the biggest thing is you won't bottle things up because resentment is a big thing uh, that couples deal with. And after a point, the resentments become so huge that there's no way to even sort them out. Loving yourself means that you accept yourself, you're able to express yourself appropriately, you expect, exp you know, um, ask for what you need from the other person uh, in an appropriate way and if it feels like this isn't the right person then you also take the step of saying okay this is not the right person for me either right so, so, so then you can realistically look at it so it's not all about you it's, it's it could be about the other person but then you will be able to see it only if you've sorted your own self out to to some extent yeah. and and it's a process I mean I have to say it doesn't happen overnight it doesn't happen instantly learning uh, about yourself looking at your own thinking patterns, changing them uh, is a process. And I think we all go through uh, with that process throughout mm -hmm. our lives. It's not uh, something that happens immediately or, or that there is somebody who's completely sorted. Yeah. It's a work in progress. But it's a work yeah. in progress for, for everyone. You'll be able to find more discussions on topics related to the concept of patterns. Thinking patterns, behavior patterns, coping patterns, relationship patterns on our YouTube channel, Rebrain TV.